Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 22nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today I published a quick post about NTP servers within pool.ntp.org, something that uh, I sort of just thought about earlier this week, so no complete data yet, really just some first observations. And the real question is here, how accurate are uh, these NTP servers? And uh, well, uh, the result is they're actually pretty good. Uh, they were a couple of obvious outliers, uh, but uh, really only very few, only about five uh, I had out of the 1500 or so that I uh, looked at. And uh, in general, uh, the uh, precision or reliability of uh, these NTP servers was sort of within sort of 10, 20 uh, milliseconds, which was about as well as I could determine it with a little uh, script that I uh, created to measure this. Now, uh, this is definitely good enough for any sort of home, small business use. If you need something more higher precision, then of course you still should probably think in installing an on-premise NTP server that synchronizes with something uh, like a GPS. GPS, uh, by the way, has had some issues uh, recently, but uh, more localized, and apparently uh, mostly in Russia, in some large cities, there is some GPS jamming happening, likely related uh, to the war with Ukraine. Some measures here to protect those cities from uh, GPS guided munitions. This kind of jamming may affect the time accuracy of uh, GPS, uh, but uh, really hard to tell uh, without really seeing uh, how these signals are being jammed, if this affects all the satellites or uh, all the different navigation systems. With GPS jamming, you may just have a simple denial of service where you can't receive GPS anymore, or actually the introduction of fake GPS signals that will give you a bad position. And with that, of course, would also give you a bad time. One thing we have noted a number of times, and uh, I think we had actually a post about this uh, last week, is the problem that attackers are injecting advertisements in search results in order to trick users to visit a malicious site. Well, uh, the FBI uh, now actually has published an advisory warning users of uh, this particular technique. Uh, like I said, it's not a new technique, but what's kind of new here is that even the FBI is now outright recommending ad blocking extensions for your browsers. Ad blocking extensions always uh, were a little bit sort of controversial because there's sort of this social contract here that you get free content on websites in exchange for exposing yourself to advertisements. But in particular with advertisement agencies not being able to control these malicious advertisements and putting users at risk, it makes more and more sense to use an ad blocker, not just sort of to get rid of annoying advertisements, but really just to get rid of uh, outright dangerous advertisements. Let me have a little bit uh, Christmas related uh, story after all uh, for Christmas. Some of the listeners out here who have children uh, may consider uh, to uh, give a smartphone or other similar device to their kids as a gift. Well, a security company Sec Consult now took a look at some of the parental control software that is uh, being sold or offered for these devices. In particular, they looked at several several uh, Android uh, applications. Now, first of all, the first result is probably not a big surprise that uh, these applications can be bypassed. And sometimes that's not even all that difficult. But then they also noted that many of the portals being used to adjust the settings in these applications are vulnerable to various cross-site requests forgery and also to cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, which could be used to, first of all, bypass some of the settings or also to attack the user, speak the parent themselves. 
And CrowdStrike is reporting that they are seeing attacks that actively bypass some of the mitigation techniques that users put in place for the proxy, not shell vulnerability in exchange. Now, uh, this vulnerability is of course patched now and uh, these bypasses do not affect patched systems. But if you remember when this vulnerability first uh, became known before the patch was released, there was a little bit of cat and mouse game where Microsoft uh, released some mitigation uh, techniques and uh, then attackers again came up with ways to bypass them. Well, uh, these mitigation techniques were never really sort of meant to be a permanent fix. They were meant to be a quick fix. So, uh, well, definitely get your exchange servers patched if you still happen to run some on premise. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And remember, there will no, be no podcast next week. Uh, there will still be one more this week for Friday, but uh, no podcast between uh, Christmas and New Year. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.